A new report claims a major revamp of the childcare subsidy could see more women back in work, boost the economy and cut the gender gap. The findings come from accounting and consulting firm KPMG. Chang Lim is the CEO of the Australian Child Care Alliance in New South Wales and he joins us now. Chang Lim, welcome. Good so to see you what's, again. what's the problem with the setup of the current childcare subsidy? Well, basically when a family and at the moment the income uh, system is based on the household. So as a family, a couple uh, gets be, uh, earns more and more, um, and as and we want our families all to earn more and more, as uh, particularly when it comes to cost of living, but, uh, it, especially in New South Wales. Um, uh, they are dis disenfranchised. Uh, they get less childcare subsidy. Now it comes to the point whereby uh, if they earn well over three hundred fifty thousand as a household, uh, they get nothing after that. Uh, so there, was, there has always been a uh, structural problem with regards to how we, how we ought to incentivize uh, families, parents, uh, to become uh, in, back into the workforce. But isn't it fair enough that there's a sliding scale, that uh, poorer people get more money back with a subsidy and rich people get less? And perhaps the cap may have been set a little bit too low. But, and you have to understand, uh, in New South Wales, for example, uh, where the cost of living is the highest in, in Australia, uh, that could be a problem. And perhaps that's, we need to figure out a way in which to identify more local issues to solve that problem. But at the moment, any, uh, any um, solutions to uh, help incentivize uh, more parents to go back into the workforce or to be supported. So with the current setup, there comes a point where it becomes an actual disincentive to work. Where That's right. Kind of, uh, it, it, it makes more sense for them not to work because of, of the, the way the system's set up? Correct. And not, and not just uh, it's a disincentive to not to work. There's also a situation whereby um, if they uh, reach to a particular level, uh, they would then be attracted towards unregulated care. So when we actually have a situation whereby uh, uh, we, we profess that our uh, early childhood education system uh, is providing the, the, the education outcomes and social well-being and uh, development um, um, programs for our children, yet we're pushing uh, uh, families to consider uh, effectively unregulated care, there is a disconnect. Uh, from the perspective of uh, policy objectives versus also reality. And so this report uh, proposes a top-up for people in certain situations so it makes sense for them to work. Uh, have you had a good look at this proposal and does it sound like this could work? Look, we, we, it's only best been released uh, yeah. today. Yeah. Um, and so we're still, as an organisation, nationally, we are still uh, digesting the, uh, the ideas. Uh, the principle in which it is proposing, and that is uh, greater incentives to uh, support um, both parents to go back to the workforce, we, would, we have always been supportive of that. Uh, in actual fact, ironically, when the childcare subsidy uh, system was first proposed, it was, it was interesting that we actually f foretold that this was going to be a problem, and in fact, KPMG just basically uh, um, pointed out that uh, we were correct. Uh, we need to, perhaps, um, the language we need to do is we need to we need to fix the system, uh, figure out how we can actually make the thing work better, um, and plus how do we have the best interests of our children at heart? So is it unfortunate that authorities didn't listen to you in the first place? If, if these are the, exactly the concerns <laughs> you were raising back then? Well, look, it's it's never too late to fix the system, and uh, and in actual fact, we are, uh, the, the better opportunities we can give to our children and working parents as well. The, the greater our uh, entire country will be. So what are some other key issues in the childcare sector at the moment apart, apart from these issues with the childcare subsidy? Well, things like, for example, uh, ironically, there is an oversupply of childcare, and in an unusual circumstance whereby normally in, in normal marketplaces, when there's an oversupply of something, prices actually go down. When in actual fact, for us, when oversupply of childcare actually occurs, prices actually go up. So we have, a, in, not everywhere, but in many places all across Australia, we have this problem of an oversupply of childcare. Because and there was that period where there was, we heard so many stories about people finding it impossible to find a place for that kid. So that, that's kind of turned around now. Yes, yeah. and, and in fact, now, now uh, f thankfully, uh, and I do have to thank the uh, Commonwealth, uh, that they are now wanting to talk about how do we solve this problem. Uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, but we, we are a long way before we can actually solve this problem. And what, what what are your ideas on that? Are you, uh, does some centres have to be closed down? Well, no. We live in a free market 
uh, yeah. um, system and the way how we actually probably could do it at, at the very least is to provide uh, market information that actually can help inform new entrants before they come into the market to begin with. Let's start with that. The idea, other ideas could be also that like the, uh, if, if pharmacy location rules can uh, can actually regulate where pharmacies, um, schools, uh, hospitals should be, well, why not uh, 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 child care services as well? Why can't we regulate that? We used to have that in 97, 98, uh, but for some reason we don't do that anymore. But as a free market operator you're, you're keen to see that kind of regulation? A balanced approach which I think will balance both the needs and supply uh, I think would be a, a quantum leap forward. Yeah okay Chang Lim thanks so much for coming to chat to us.